Yes. Yes. And uh, but we've created the mold for all these uh, pieces that we manufacture here. And what's really cool about this particular handle is designed for different types of a different type of user. Some people like to use their fingertip, and they're more pulling like this. And this gives you a really comfortable way to not only hold it with your thumb, but your middle finger here resting to the point on this handle, right in that area. And that gives you really good control for uh, pulling up your fingertip. For myself, I flip it around and I design it this way so it would be more of a wraparound for this middle finger and I could do my knuckle dragging technique where I'm actually kind of uh, putting the, the trigger right at the first knuckle. And I'm not, you know, this, this is an airbrush that's just designed for detail. I'm not operating this brush way back here all the time. I mean, almost 95% of the work that I'm doing is probably in this range of movement. This is all I'm moving this airbrush. I'm not going way to hell back here unless I'm like cleaning the tip or flushing it out. All my movement is right here. That is the whole secret to this airbrush. It has been designed and set up for operation to work within that first 5% of pull. There's a whole lot of mechanics <coughs> and a lot of engineering inside the airbrush. The needle guide, the contact point for the rocker arm, and everything that actually allow for the, the very subtle manipulation of this airbrush within that 5%, but yet really you have miles. You know, you're only moving it this much, but there's quite a bit of difference between this and this. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this thing would be like wide open, you know, past this point. So, working with the new tips that we're going to be designing, uh, we're also designing a proprietary uh, bullet cap that's going to be unique for uh, the new tip as well as the conversion barrel that will run all the uh, Japanese uh, fluid tips on the brush, so you'll be, able, you'll be able to build this brush however you want it to. We can also use the Pache equipment that allows you to run a variable size tip and needle, as well as a fan tip uh, spray spray cap. I think I've got one of those around here. You can also set up your brush with the Pache system uh, that they have for a fan pattern, which is really nice for uh, you know graduated fades and like ghost flames, uh, tips and stuff like that. So that's one of the things I really liked about the versatility of this brush was the fact that you could do so many different things with it. And with the things that we're working on, it's going to be quite unique and certainly allow you to set it up however it is that you, you feel you're comfortable with spraying. Different materials, uh, you know, the air pressures are going to be obviously inherent and regulated by type of material you're putting through it. So the brush will give you all that flexibility to run water-based urethanes you know, whatever you want to do. And if you're like me, you can't just have one. So I think I've got like three of them set up right now I'm operating with. Uh, with the same function except for one of them. One of them has it set up with a, a wider tip and brush a needle just for a larger application. And I use it quite a bit for swashes and uh, areas where I want to get through quickly and try to get the coverage that I want. But right now, this brush is just set up just for detail. I mean, I am barely moving this brush when I do what I do. You can see that my finger looks like it's moving, but I'm probably only pulling the, the needle back a couple hundreds of thousandths of an inch at a time when I'm doing this. And with the complexity, the shape of the tips and needles and stuff, that you know, the taper, I guess I could draw this out for you guys a little easier. Can you have a sharpie there, guys? Understanding the mechanics of the airbrush, so I'll draw it right here on this mask. So you've got this taper on this needle, and then you get your fluid tip that's kind of like wrapped around in the inner edges like this, inner edges like actually like that, and others like that. So your contact point allows us to seat somewhere back in here. So if this needle is pushed forward, the diameter here is going to meet the diameter there. So we're talking, depending on the degree of taper, we're talking only maybe five degrees. I haven't done the actual geometry of math, what the distance is to open this up, say, um, you know, 
0.1, whatever the distance the difference between the uh, fluid tip and the needle would be. But at that point in time, when you've got that much distance, uh, let's say that this distance between here, this distance between here, sum of equals the diameter of the, uh, the needle, you're, you're getting quite a bit of flow. What you're looking at, from my part, is I'm airbrushing, creating all this dimension where this gap, this distance between the opening between the needle and the fluid capper, considerably smaller. And the control range that I'm dealing with, you know, very little bit of uh, lateral movement on the airbrush needle. And that's the way I designed it. I didn't design this uh, airbrush to go out and blast a whole ton of color on a t-shirt. Uh, it is designed for primarily detail work, which hopefully you guys have been able to see from my work that the brush is uh, more than capable. But I don't want this to be an advertisement for the brush. I, I just, you know, want to enjoy painting. Maybe more of an advertisement for Old Tub. <coughs> but, uh, you can see what the brush is doing, and I certainly appreciate the, the questions and the opportunity to answer any of them. Well, we have another one waiting in the wings. What's that? We have another question in the wings. Uh -oh. Justin was talking about, he noticed that it was lighter. And um, I said we didn't measure it, and it was five grams lighter. Yes, it is. It's exactly. Somebody wanted to know what you felt about it being lighter than the other brush. Oh, it is actually. And, you know, we, me and Diana actually broke out the scales. Too. With the actual uh, handle on it, it was lighter than the previous Mojo. Um, a lot of it has to do, I think, with the handle arms being aluminum, and the other one, I believe, is a, a cast alloy. So we, we gain a lot here, we gain a lot here on the cap. We've got the aluminum caps. Uh, the weight is 5 grams, which, you know, what is that? I mean, I don't even know what 5 grams of anything really looks like, but it, uh, yeah, I know what it feels like after a period of time. And I was I was surprised actually at how much lighter it was than the, the other mojo. I, I thought it would be much closer, if not heavier, because it looks uh, beefier. It's got, it's, it's got a little bit more girth to it. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, right. But as far as the detail, I mean, I don't really have anything I can't do with this thing uh, with the brush. There's no ever a need for myself to pick up a uh, paintbrush to do any detailing with this. The only time I pick up a paintbrush is to pinstripe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 